What's up? Yes, it's your girl, Adiola. <laughs> where is it done? Just tell me. Where is it done in a democratic country? When we have a president, how can soldiers confiscate newspapers? Jay, Nigerians, they laid ambush for vendors of newspaper and uh, distribution vans. They impounded vans and newspaper copies. Ah, they also beat up vendors as well as drivers of newspaper houses. What a shame in a democratic country. Ah, Nigeria, I'm really disappointed. Ah, they confiscated the nation newspaper, daily trust, leadership, punch, and a vanguard. All these papers that are seen as critical of the government. Are we back in Abacha's time? Tell me, if only these newspapers have been watching my show, all of them by now, they will know how to do their karate. When those soldiers were coming, they would have been like, you know, in their karate style. Although, don't practice this on a soldier. Especially a Nigerian soldier. Please, don't try it. Guess what the military's explanation was? They said that this is just a normal security routine check. And they did it for days. Hey, this is a routine check only in Nigeria. But you know, some people are telling me. Move close. You know, me, I don't know anything. But they are saying that it is because of that story. You know, the one the week before, when Boko Haram raided about four villages in a bonu and then the nigerian soldiers couldn't stop them they said that that was why they are trying to confiscate the paper yes you know that the soldiers had to run for their lives that day boko haram overpowered the soldiers so the soldiers left uh, the villagers they had to run for their lives last week tuesday yes so boko haram killed between four to five hundred people in one day most of them were men, including young boys and even baby boys. They would snatch them from their mothers that were breastfeeding them and kill them right in front of their mother. They came dressed as soldiers and then they told the villagers to assemble in the village square that they've come to rescue them from Boko Haram. So those ones gathered in the village square only for them to start firing. 500 souls in one day, my people. And this is not a country that is at war. Eh? You see, so the papers reported the story, including the part where the soldiers fled. That was why the soldiers got angry, oh. I'm telling you. But what I don't understand is how they could confiscate papers for days and the president has not said anything. You see, I am really disappointed. More than 200 girls are still in the Sambisa forest, oh. Till now, they are now going after a uh, press freedom, you see? Wait a minute. Is this how we continue to talk about these missing girls week after week and then uh, nothing would happen? It's been 60 something days now, my people. More than two months that these girls were kidnapped and nothing, nothing has been done. I thought that they were strategizing, but now that it's been more than two months, I know this is not about strategizing. By the way, hmm, it has happened though. It has happened. No be me talk about The former CBN governor, Mr. Lamido Sanusi. Remember him now? The one that was suspended by Mr. President for bringing up the missing $49 billion. Yes, yeah, so that man is now the Emir of Kano. Hey! I'm telling you it has happened. You see why I say that it's good to be good, especially if you are seeking re-election. Eh, you don't want to make unnecessary enemies for yourself. Which will be my own. You guys know me, I don't know anything. All I know is that, eh, Already, the governor of Kano State does not really, really like Mr. Jonathan. In fact, he doesn't hide it. He's a member of the opposition party, that is the APC. And um, because Mr. Jonathan suspended Sanusi when he was at CBN, he made himself another enemy. Definitely, I know that Sanusi or the governor won't be the ones that will decide for the people who they should vote for, but I'm sure that they can certainly influence some voters. I've been reading a lot, and I found out that Kano happens to have the highest number of registered voters in northern Nigeria, about 5.1 million registered voters. Lagos is number one in Nigeria with 6.2 million registered voters. And um, right now, APC is the one that has been reigning in Lagos State. So if Mr. President will not win in Lagos, he really needs to win in Kano. I hope that we are communicating, not that I know anything, you know, <laughs> but uh, we're just trying to rub minds together. So the Emir of Kano is also the second most influential Muslim leader in all of Nigeria. That is after the Sultan of Sokoto. I'm not saying that uh, Jonathan cannot win the coming election. Ha ha ba, <laughs> waiting be my own. In fact, many people have been telling me that Jonathan will do whatever he can to rig the coming election. I mean, to win to win the coming election, God forbid rigging, because you, he already promised us that there will be no rigging. I'm just trying to let you see why Mr. President has not been particularly happy since Sanusi was a turbaned as the Emir. In fact, till now, Mr. President is yet to send a congratulatory message to the Emir. I said Abba, that is not mature now. Even if you are not happy with the guy being appointed, act mature and do the needful. He was scheduled to go to Canon, but he canceled his trip the moment Sanusi was announced as the Emir. And then, Policemen have surrounded the Emir's palace 
for days. I am very sure that Mr. President as a gentleman would not tamper with an age-long tradition that has been in practice even before we started electing presidents in Nigeria. Meanwhile, I was very disappointed, my ogre. Eh? I was really, really disappointed that while all of this was going on, policemen disrupted an APC rally in the state. They even killed one young man. Eh? Why? Why? They were throwing tear gas. In fact, they attacked Governor Fayemi's convoy. Can you imagine that in a democratic country? You know that Ekiti's governorship election is uh, coming up in a few weeks, yes. And we know, we know that President Jonathan needs PDP to win in Ekiti. If he would win the coming presidential election without rigging. <laughs> in fact, last Sunday, Mr. President made an open promise. He promised that he would develop Ekiti State if only the people of Ekiti would vote for a PDP candidate as their governor. <laughs> That is why you're saying that is probably not a smart thing for the president to say. I'll be calling the one that you will only develop a state if they vote for some. Uh, no, 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 no. It's not a smart thing to say, but what do I know? So I'm really disappointed that PDP is now using the police to disrupt the rally in Ekiti. That is not nice now. Eh? And uh, as if that is not enough, with orders from above, Governor Amechi's chartered jet to Kano to go and celebrate with Sanusi. Do you know that it was grounded? In fact, they locked up Amechi at the, the airport in Kano. <laughs> They locked him up with all that from above, of course. And speaking of jets, I heard that someone smuggled explosives on a Delta plane that was coming from Nigeria to Atlanta. They had to stop that plane in Dakar, Senegal in order to take care of that man. I said, hey, if not that they caught that guy, do you know how many people would have died by now? I hope that they really tighten up security at uh, Lagos and Abuja. Hey, because if this guy can get on board with uh, explosives, Boko Haram can get on board with explosives, please don't scare me anymore. Tighten up security. Yes, I'm coming home for Easter. No, Easter has passed. Yeah, Easter has passed. Yeah, Christmas. Yes, I'm coming home for Christmas. Tighten up security. But back to what I was saying. As you guys know, I don't know much about this whole dynasty story. All I know is that Sanusi is from a royal family. His grandfather was the emir before the one that died. And now they made him the emir. End of story. Let it go. If only Mr. President had treated him right when he talked about the missing $49 billion, maybe now Mr. President could now hope to have some northern votes. 2015 presidential elections will be very, very interesting. Don't you think so? But uh, you know, everything that I've said so far, you guys know that. I don't know anything. I beg. They all came from my little girl's mind. What do I know? Guess what? I'm just keeping it real. <laughs> Moving on to Brazil. I'm so excited to tell you guys that World Cup 2014 has officially started. Yes, sir! Oh, here we go. By that beautiful lady <laughs> in Adiwe, you know, we both have gapped it. <laughs> People with gapped it, but usually very, very good. <laughs> that is a Miss Weyala of Ghana. Very beautiful woman, very great musician. Eh? But why are you playing me Ghanaian music? Have you been paid off? Now you are rooting for Ghana. Eh? One of my Ghanaian people, no offense, but this is the World Cup. We are winning this World Cup, we already know that. I bet, give me Nigerian music, Joe. <laughs> Yes, that is how you do it. <laughs> I don't tire. <laughs> I don't tire. Oh my god. Oh my god. I don't tire. That is how we do it in Niger. Ah! Give me the power to win. <laughs> in fact, I love all the countries that are participating in the World Cup. And I wish all of those countries good luck. <laughs> but when it comes to soccer, ooh, ooh, my god. My god, my don't even go there. We already took this World Cup. Just wait and see. By the way, eh. <coughs> I was a little embarrassed when America beat Nigeria in a friendly match. I said, Che! Why is this happening? Look at this player. So why you they embarrass me like that now? Nah? Eh? America. Hmm. If you want me to give you private lessons, just say it. Just say the word. Anytime, any day. I don't mind. I know I'm very busy, but hey, uh, for you guys, anything, anytime. But for you to be embarrassing me in front of everybody. Ah, America beats you. Eh? And you're able to go back home. What a shame. Anyway, this is the World Cup. Well, starting with your game on Monday, you better bring back the cup to mommy. Eh? <laughs> bring me the World Cup so I can touch it and bless all of you. I bet give me that song. Give me the power to win. Moving on to the beautiful country of Uganda, how is it possible that Uganda, my Uganda, will be leading East Africa in a bank fraud? Hey, hey, bank fraud, can you believe that? You are doing your woo, woo in uh, Uganda. Ah, 
and uh, please, please, I don't want to hear that uh, the land from Nigerians. Oh, it is uh, because of Nigeria. No, 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 please. Let everybody take responsibility for their own mistakes. Ah, in fact, some of you are too quick to blame Nigerians whenever a crime is committed. Why now? Apparently, hey, Uganda loses between how much? Between one to ten million dollars every year. Between one to ten million. Wait a minute. That's it. Ten million. <laughs> no, 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 my friend. Uh -uh, double check that figure. Ten million dollars. That is it. It is right. Between one to ten million. That is like chicken change in Nigeria. In fact, <laughs> that tells me they didn't learn from Nigerians because that would be an embarrassment now. Ten million dollars. I mean, one minister can vamoose more than ten million dollars in one day. Eh? What is your problem? Why are you putting up this picture, my friend? Haven't we talked about this? This case has already been swept under the carpet. Why are you bringing it up again? Nothing will happen. Don't you know this is a touch not my anointed? Why are you bringing it up? Why are you looking for trouble? Have I mentioned any names? What is your problem now? Stay focused. We are talking about Uganda. Uganda right now. Back to what we were saying, Jani, my people. It's good that you are catching them now when it's not more than 10 million dollars. So please, those of you that are scamming people in Uganda, I beg, stop it. 10 million is a lot of money, you know? I understand though that Kenya loses more than that, as well as Tanzania. But uh, when it comes to bank fraud, yes, Uganda is number one in East Africa. That is not something to be proud of, my Ugandan people. So please, eh, stop the yahoo yahoo. Guess what, I'm just keeping it real. Still on Nigeria. Today I have some great news. Yes, I'm so excited to tell you that the federal government has launched new commuter trains in Lagos State. Yes, 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 yes. Oh my god, I'm so excited. They must have been watching this show, right? Because, you know, I'm always talking about that locomotive in uh, Abuja. Thank God Almighty. No more trains like this. My people, how exciting. This is the new train in Lagos State. I heard that these trains actually come with air conditioners. I said, ha. Huh? Put me on board. I've always known that we can do all these things, you know, deep down. Yes. And I know that it's just the beginning of more development. But I'm so excited because this train will significantly lower traffic jam in Lagos State. Don't you think so? It will bring competition. The bus riders cannot charge you too much now when they know that you can go and take the train. And people cannot get to their destinations now quicker. How wonderful is that? Now, if you're living in Lagos and you're watching this show and you've taken the train, please send me a picture of the inside of the train. I'm yet to see the inside. I've only seen the outside and it looks good. I know that they were painted Yes, but at least I'm glad that they are not locomotives from 1950 like it, this one So I'm so excited about that. I hope they keep watching this show this so that they can build us international hospitals as well Now my second great news for today is that the two Nigerian ladies that were deported from Canada last year have returned back I'm talking about Victoria Odu and Favor Amadi. Both of them were deported last year for taking jobs off campus at Walmart store without proper student work permit. Now the case had been going on since 2012 and that was the last time the girls were in school. So they've lost two years of education already. But thank God that they are back. But the government of Canada has really worked with them. I really, really appreciate the government of Canada and all the Nigerians that have been rallying for those girls, the churches that rallied around them, even the school, everybody at their school had been protesting on their behalf and the government of, of Canada has finally allowed them to come back and resume school. The best part of the story is that Canada has now amended its law allowing international students to walk off campus. I'm like what? That's great news. <coughs> For those of you that are looking into <laughs> going to study abroad, eh? <laughs> this is good news for you, my brother and my sister. Pay attention. This is a serious matter. Canada is allowing international students to walk off campus. America wouldn't allow international students to walk off campus. I'm just saying my own. Anyway, I spoke with both of them before they were deported. I got to interview them on Sahara TV. And the video is still on YouTube if you want to know more about their case and how to reach them. And guess what? I'm just keeping it real. Before I go, I want to thank everyone that has donated towards my single. Yes, we've raised almost a thousand dollars. Yes, yes. How many days do we have left? My people, don't wait till the last minute. Now, ah, some of you are waiting till the last minute. Why now, eh? <laughs> but thank you, thank you to everybody that has donated. I really appreciate you guys. All right, y'all. It's been real, and I'm keeping it real right up in here. Until next week, I'm going to see y'all later. Peace out.